Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Tuesday afternoon. Hope well, hope you're having a good day. I hope the day continues to go well. Uh, we've got obviously the loan roundup talking today. Uh, we've got some guys that didn't play as much as they normally do, we've got guys that scored their first goal even. So plenty of some good stuff to talk about in there, as well as interest in a new attacker in Omar Mamouche. I've talked to you about him, I'll give you a bit of a rundown, who he is, style of play, all that jazz that I normally do. But just want to say, if you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And let, let's let's really start with the boys out on loan because that's that's more pressing at the moment. So, like I said, we had some players that played less than they normally do. We had players that got their first goal. We've also had players that are continuing to do the business. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of good stuff coming out of the weekend. I'm going to start with the man in lead, Joe Roden. And uh, I was at the pub on Friday again, birthday weekend, so I was enjoying myself. And uh, the Le Leeds Leicester game was on, and uh, to be honest, uh, I'm surprised Leicester didn't wrap the game up earlier on than they than uh, won. Well, when Leeds decided to kick on, they created chances. Daka missed an absolute sitter right before Leeds just went off on one, and it was a really weird spell of just everything went right for Leeds. Deflections, you know, weird fifty fifties, all that stuff, all went right. And they won the game three on, which is massive when it comes to the championship title race, but also automatic promotion. It was a game that had they lost, it which could have climbed right back up above them. But the fact they won it, it just brings Leicester a little bit down to the pack. And I say the pack being obviously Ipswich leads. But Joe played 90 minutes. He was solid. He was solid. There was a couple of times he got caught out of position. I, like I said, I watched the game. So, you know, I actually felt like I was... Really in the know of Joe Roden because I was really watching him to be honest. He got caught out a little bit. I think Leeds as a whole, because they were losing, they really, really went for it. And sometimes when you really go for it, you can be caught out. But I thought in the whole, he played well. There were some mistakes. I also thought the pace of the game at times maybe was just a tad bit high. But overall, it's it's a hell of a big game. You know, it's it's the biggest game Leeds may have all season up to date. Winning the game is the important thing, you know. So, yeah, Joe, Joe, very good. Like I said, 90 minutes, happy, happy days. I want to move on to Troy Parrott, and I'm going to be tying in a little bit of a contract update on him, OK? You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, they lost 2-1 at home, at home to Vitesse Arnhem. Uh, played 90 minutes, didn't have a great game. One of those things. That's how I'm going to sum up. Troy's had a really good loan, so I'm, you know, you're never going to shoot him for the odd game or two where he doesn't play that well. It's a new country, you know, all those things that you've got to tie into a player's development. But I want to tie in a contract update for you. And it came from Alistair Gold, who said that Troy Parrott has a contract with Spurs until 30th June 2025. We all know that. And there's understood to be an option within it for the club to extend that by another year. So to the summer of 2026. And I think Spurs will take it. I think it's... Um, I think smart to take it. One thing I would be interested to see, and, and, and this for me is the key thing. See what he can offer you in the summer. Does he, you know, does he wow Ange? Does, does Ange look at him and think, I can get something out of this guy? He can, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe he is a prem proven player, but without having the ability to prove it. And if he's not, move him on. And I've always been really key on this. And I've been really, really strong on this point. If he's not going to be playing regularly for Spurs or you don't think he's going to be good enough to play regularly for Spurs, let him move on. For the benefit of himself and his own career, let him really kick on now. But also for Spurs, if you've extended him by another year, you might get a few extra quid out of him. And we know the big boys in, in, the, uh, in the Dutch league all quite like him. They see him week in, week out for um, Excelsior Rotterdam. You know, Ajax and your PSVs and all, you know, maybe even a fire in order if they moved on from a Santiago Jimenez. There is clubs there, and, and, and it's not like we'd have to go with a loan, with an option to buy. It's not going to cost that much money. His wages won't be that high, if I'm honest. You might get five to seven million out of him. It's to your FFP, which obviously is quite nice. But on top of that, it's just money that you can add into the summer that you look at it and go, well, we need a backup left back. We need a backup right back. We still need a goal, a, a number two goalie. We still need another centre back. We need another midfielder. We could do with a winger and maybe even a striker. You're not going to get all of that in the summer. That's what I'm saying. Just on the face things, that's what you need at least, right? That just adds, that might give you the ability to get a backup goalie, you know? I don't see a backup goalie being crucial, if you know what I mean. Like It's not like a, a starting winger, you know? 
But I do really think the backup goalie could be really, really important. And I would like one personally this summer. But yeah, a little bit on Troy. Uh, moving on to Sergio Reguilon out in Brentford. Look, they didn't play well yesterday, Brentford. They lost 4-2 away to West Ham. It was a whirlwind game. Jared Bowen, masterclass. He was at fault probably for a couple of the goals. Wasn't great. I mean, he played 73 minutes. He, he didn't have a great game. I mean, if you're a defender and you've conceded four, it's not a good game, full stop, no matter who you are in defence. But he's had a good start to his loan spell. Like I said, he's only been there, you know, a month or so. So let's not crucify him. He's had some good moments for Brentford. The better and... The, sorry, the more consistently he plays, because Rico Henry being injured obviously helps that ability. The more ability he's going to be playing, the more you're going to cash in on the summer. Because he's, be, he's not here next year. We know he's not here next year. Move them on, get a few quid, off you go. Get yourself a backup. The money, think about Troy Parrott. If you sold Troy Parrott and you sold Sergio Regler, maybe the backup left back you get is from the money that you sell, saved on them. It's not outrageous to say, you know. Uh, moving on to a guy who got his first goal, Jaffet Tenganga, in a 2-1 away win to Southampton, which, by the way, Millwall were just above the relegation zone. So this is a humongous win against a club who's fighting to come back up to the Premier League. So... Credit to Neil Harris, obviously first game back as Mill manager. Look, Jaffa Tanganga, five minutes in. The ball comes in from a set piece. He basically beats Bazunu, the the, uh, the goalie, and just loops over him. So, you know, he had a really good game. Neil Harris was talking about the fact that, that he, he, you know, he's very good. Put his body on the line quite a lot. He did also clear one off the line uh, from a Che Adams strike, if I remember it correctly. And look, 2-1 away. 2-1 away, regardless of who you are, is a good result normally. Two on away to a club who's at the other end of the table in the in the better end. That were that was a win that you weren't expecting. You were hoping maybe a draw, and you got a win. It's like three points, three three points if you know what I mean. You know, um, Matthew Craig out of Doncaster, one 0 win, a good result for them. Again, played ninety minutes. This is a guy obviously not long ago scored his first goal. He's playing regular week in week out football. So, look, really happy for Matthew. Obviously. This has been a really good development for him. Um, for Josh Keeley, you know, 2-0 home win at home to uh, York City. York City also just uh, brought in a replacement manager. It was the Worthing FC manager, uh, Adam Hinshelwood, I think it was. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, the Josh Keeley clean sheet maybe was the uh, end of the new ma the, the old manager's regime. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. For Jed Spence, I've got 12 minutes off the bench in the 2-0 home win for Genoa, which is always really, really nice. He's actually not lost a game that he's played in, I believe, if that was a stat or something like that. He's had a really good start. Genoa quite like him. You know, again, he's only just gone there. Whole new country, a new language, you know, a new system in regards that he's playing left wing back quite a lot. He'll be fine. And they'll pick up the... They'll pick up the um, the buy option, if not someone else will, because he'll play enough football for him to be. I mean, it's ten million euros. It's not. It's not crazy money, you know. But uh, yeah, no, good for good. Uh, good for him, obviously. Good two new win. I think it was home to Udinese, so you know can't complain about that. Obviously, um, Tanya Nobelli, no minutes. Not going to spend time on that one, obviously. Um, Ashley Devine and uh, Ashley Devine, sorry, Alfie Devine and Ashley Phillips. Together contributed, I think it was about 18, 19 minutes um, in a 2-0 away win to Middlesbrough, which is a really good result. You know, you think Plymouth, one end of the country, up to the absolute other end of the country. 2-0 home win, away win, very good result for them. Obviously, new managers come in. He's not playing the most exciting of football, but they're getting some results. And for Plymouth, this season was about staying up. They've, they're not big spenders. Obviously, their manager moved on in the middle of the season as well. Ashley and Alfie, they, they they love them down in Plymouth. They love them both. So do you know what? Not gonna not gonna be angry if they don't play ninety minutes every single week. They can't. You know they can't. They're human. Let me talk about Omar Mamouche. So this came from uh, Sport Build via Team Talk. Who said that Tottenham have set their sights on Frankfurt striker Omar Mamouche, who has notched fifteen goals in thirty games this season. Twenty five year old twenty five year old dreams of shining in the Premier League, and is also on Newcastle's radar. Let's talk about his bio before we talk about his stats and who he is as a person. So Omar Khalid Mohamed Mamouche, uh, born February 7th, 1999. Like I said, attacking forward, played kind of wing as well. Uh, plays Frankfurt. So the summer of 2027 is when his contract expires. This season, 
30, 30 appearances, 15 goals, 5 assists. I think the majority you can look at via being the Bundesliga and the Conference League where he's played 25 games. He's got 14 goals and 5 assists. So look, 25 games, 19 goal contributions. That's not bad, is it, you know? When I was looking at Omar and I was sort of just sort of trying to get to understand him a bit more as a player and what he is as a centre forward, I look at him as a bit of a poacher. You know, the link up, I didn't see as much there, but I looked at him as a poacher. Quite instinctive, you know, doesn't really think about the fact that he's going to shoot. He's just shooting. That's his, He's trained his mind to just not think and just hit. And uh, I was impressed by some of the finishing. Um, I feel like he could be quite wasteful though at times. Good penalty taker. I don't know if that really, I don't know if you care about that at all. But yeah, he's a good penalty taker. Uh, I did see some really good ones. Quite deceptive penalty. I mean, even when I was watching them, I was like, he's going down the middle. No, he went to the keeper's right. No, he's going down the left. Oh, he's going down the right. I, I couldn't guess where he was going, to be honest. Whereas some penalty takers, even with Harry Kane, I'm like, down the middle. You you kind of can sense where it's going. With Omar, I was like, I, I've not got a clue there. So, look, good player. Interesting to see what the value on him is because... He's not one of the top goal scorers in terms of, like, you always think of uh, Victor Boniface. You think of Serhu Garassi, Kane. You know, the guys in the Bundesliga that are absolutely thumping him in. He doesn't pop up on big transfer lists like that. Is that an under-radar and signing? You think of Vicario. You think of Destiny Adogi. Um, you think of even, like, Kulisevsky Bentoncourt. You think of those sort of guys that really kind of... Went under the radar that no one truly expected Spurs to go and get, who have become quite key parts of the squad. Potentially, this could be another one. And I think we should forget about the idea he's not 70 million, he can't be good. We should think about he's playing in a top five league, he's playing hell. I think the Bundesliga might be the second best league in the world. So he's playing in a really good league. We've seen Haaland come over from that league and absolutely destroy our league. So it's not like it's a farmer's league, in my opinion, especially not this season with. Leverkusen doing the business. He's still at Bayern Munich that are decent. You know, Leipzig are good. Dortmund are actually struggling. And ironically, the league still looks really great even without with them struggling. So I'm not going to look at it as a, oh, he's not scoring 45 million goals a year. He can't be good in the Premier League. I look at it more of a system fit. And if, if we can allow the idea of playing through balls into our strikers, you know, running in behinds, he is a good presser of the ball. And he's got good energy. And I like that. So... It's not a bad shout. And I think, look, we still need a striker. We, I think we need a winger. Do Spurs, and I, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't know if they do. I'm not going to give my opinion on this right now, but it's something for you maybe to think about. Did the Spurs go, do the Spurs, sorry. Do Spurs go, well, we're not going to get the marquee winger like a Pedro Neta, but if we got a winger that was worth 35, 40 million instead of being 70, 80 million, maybe we go get a striker as well for 30 million. I don't hate that idea. I don't hate that idea. Doesn't mean it's the right idea. I'm just saying I don't hate it. But anyway, guys, then the video. Hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comments section your thoughts and feelings about all the boys out on loan. Obviously, any good, bad, or ugly. As well as your thoughts and feelings about Omar Mamouche. Would he be a guy that you would you want? Would you need to think about it a little bit more? Would he, would he not be? Let me know your thoughts and feelings. Obviously, subscribe if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, then the video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.